Bueno, nuestros invitados siempre muy especiales, programa Logros para Contarlo. Qué bueno tener a Francisco San Clemente, Pacho San Clemente, paisano, bugueño. Es de, lo, de nuestros máximos exponentes en el deporte paralímpico, en lo de maratones, la parte del atletismo. Y qué bueno encontrarnos aquí en Cali, previo a la 15K de Allianz, eh, aquí en la ciudad de Cali. Pues Pachito, nos alegra saludarlo, eh, felicitarlo por tanto logro internacional. Si ustedes se convierten en los verdaderos embajadores de nuestro país en el exterior. Bienvenido. Muchas gracias Carlito, muchas gracias eh, por este reconocimiento, un saludo para todos. Y bueno, no, para mí es un honor representar a mi región, a mi Valle del Cauca, a Uga, a Colombia. Eh, y qué bueno eh, estar en un evento de estos donde voy a volver a competir eh, dentro de Colombia, porque casi todo es internacional, y volver a correr en mi tierra, en el Valle del Cauca, con la gente, en la carrera de Allianz 15K, en realidad para mí es todo un honor, eh, y bueno, a darlo todo y contento con todo lo que está sucediendo al, alrededor del deporte paralímpico, alrededor de, digamos, de todas estas actividades que potencializan el atletismo de calle, que es lo que yo hago. Bueno, logros importantes internacionalmente, pero lo más cerquita es eh, lo que hizo en Los Ángeles, en eh, eh, primer lugar, y lo que hizo luego en París, que es lo más reciente, eh, con un séptimo lugar, que es bien importante también. Sí, bueno, contento. Ha sido un mes maravilloso, digamos, esos últimos 30 días, ganando la Maratón de Los Ángeles en Estados Unidos, yendo a París y teniendo el séptimo puesto, estar otra vez en el top 10. Quería estar, otra vez estar en el podio allí en París, pero, eh, digamos, era muy difícil ganar en Los Ángeles y correr bien en París, era muy complicado. En todo caso, y feliz con todo lo que está sucediendo, con el rendimiento, porque pues, ahorita se ve el esfuerzo que ha sucedido durante todos estos años, y no, contento con todo eso. ¿Se codea eh, Pacho con lo más granado de, 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 del deporte paralímpico en esto del atletismo en maratones a nivel internacional? Sí, eh, corro con los mejores atletas del mundo, de hecho eh, en la, precisamente en estas distancias de 10K tengo el récord de Colombia con 20 minutos 19 segundos logrado en Pistri donde corren los mejores del mundo, una carrera de 10K, la más famosa del mundo en Estados Unidos, en Atlanta y con ellos compito, nos vemos en diferentes eventos eh, a, alrededor de todo el año, el año pasado en, en Oita, en Japón donde, que es la maratón más histórica en silla de ruedas a nivel mundial, la más antigua, eh, tuve el décimo puesto con el récord del mundo que estaba compitiendo también allí mismo, y bueno, estar en estos eventos con esas experiencias y traer todos estos eventos aquí en mi región, en mi ciudad, en, 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 con mi gente, hace que se abran puertas y qué bonito que el Comité Paralímpico, que la Federación, que Allianz esté apoyando todo ese tipo de, de inclusión. Ya se maneja con otra óptica el deporte paralímpico en nuestro país, con todos los logros, no solamente en la, en la parte del atletismo, sino en las diferentes disciplinas cuando salen los muchachos a los eventos internacionales. Hay avances, hay, un, hay, hay avances, sin embargo, para falta, digamos, porque no solamente el tema de, de entrenar, competir, sino también el, todo el tema, digamos, de posicionamiento, de marca, de todo el tema mediático, todo el tema que tiene que ver, que tenemos todo lo que sucede alrededor del deporte, tiene que seguir creciendo, pero no, eh, digamos que es de reconocer todo el avance. De hecho, que haya ya esas categorías para, para atletas, digamos que suena como juego, ¿verdad? Para, lo, digamos, para el paraatletismo, sillas de ruedas, atletas de a pie, que tienen, digamos, algún tipo, digamos, de de adaptación, eh, ya abre muchísimas puertas y eso es un gran avance digamos en Colombia. Qué bueno, eh, pues ya estuvo en el exterior recientemente, eh, ya preparación para juegos para, para, para nacionales, el próximo mes de noviembre aquí en la en, en el eje cafetero, aquí en nuestro país, también se está preparando sí. para eso. Eh, bueno, sí, eh, ahorita en mayo corremos en el clasificatorio en Barranquilla, que va a ser digamos el, el, el tercer clasificatorio. Eh, la idea es hacer, bueno, están los paranacionales e intentar una marca para juegos para panamericanos. Es pista, es velocidad, y, eh, para panamericanos no hay maratón, pero si hay pruebas de velocidad, intentaré hacerlo, y, pero bueno, vamos a verlo todo a ver qué sucede. Y, pero sigo con esa, digamos, con esa mira puesta en los juegos para panamericanos y por qué no si en las maratones lograr una marca para París 2024. Es como adaptarse a una nueva distancia, ¿no? En recorridos más cortos. Sí, sí, son recorridos más cortos, más intensos, digamos, metabólicamente, en velocidad, eh, la, la vía energética que utiliza el organismo es distinta, pero eso también hay que entrenarlo. Digamos que en maratones, cuando hay cambios de ritmo, también hay que hacer esos sprints, y, y bueno, esperemos, esperemos que suceda, que, que, que nos vaya bien. Qué bueno, pues ojalá así sea. Importante la, la empresa privada, ¿no? Siempre que se vincule con el deporte. Siempre sí, eh, a lo largo de mi carrera deportiva eso ha sido vital, y que ahorita alguien se vincule abra esa posibilidad, en realidad es algo maravilloso, es loable y de felicitar y de replicar, yo creo que de replicar porque eso lo debe replicar muchísimas empresas, eh, digamos, no solamente en el atletismo de calle convencional, sino en el atletismo paralímpico. Pachito, nos alegró saludarlo, reiterarle nuestra habilitación, 
y seguramente van a llegar muchos logros todavía, está muy vigente y qué bueno que siempre deje muy en alto el nombre del país en el exterior. Que yo lo oiga, Carlos, que yo lo oiga y, y que se sigan habiendo muchísimas, muchísimas puertas. El deporte paralímpico también en logros para contar. We welcome you back to the Los Angeles Marathon presented by ASICS. Don't forget, friends and family who have someone running in the 42 seconds per mile. The differential that first mile. Oh, wait a minute. Here's this is this. Yeah, we crash had some drama here in the. Oh, so, oh, they hit something in the road, and that's James Sambita and, and Josh him. Cassidy. Yeah, Josh Cassidy was leading James Sambita. I'm telling you. That's going to eliminate the victory for Josh Cassidy and, and James Sambita. Right, and it was obviously just a flaw in the road. It was that morning light that was really challenging to see, and that's Francisco San Clemente that is in the lead now. He's from Colombia. He's 34 years of age. He's a veteran, former Mexico City uh, Marathon champion. He just got set, he just won the Guadalajara Half Marathon February 26th, so he's coming in in good shape, Paralympian, uh, and he actually. He was a soccer goalkeeper until he was at the high school days at age 18. He's got an inflammation of his spine, and it's a thing called uh, transverse myelitis, and it left him uh, paralyzed the waist down. I got the same thing at the 1990 Boston Marathon. I got very sick, and it was the inflammation of the spine. It took him 20 years to figure it out. It's the same thing, transverse myelitis, and I have that permanent flat tire on my right side. He's got both legs affected. I just had one leg minorly affected, but I know exactly, in some ways, what he's going through because I, my right leg doesn't answer the charge anymore. And it is an art form as you take a look at the elite races that are taking place, the pro wheelchair. Francisco San Clemente out of Colombia, who inherited the lead in many ways after Josh Cassidy and James Sambita uh, crashed at six minutes and 37 seconds into the race in the first two miles, hitting some bump in the road. They both hit the same thing, just one after the other, and they both went down. and it, it took time to get themselves righted, get the chair back in position. They get themselves back in the chair, situated perfectly, so they're back up and pushing. But uh, guys like uh, Francisco San Clemente is a real, that, he's a Paralympian. They, they're not, they lost way too much time to ever come back, I would think, on him. And Dina, now the women are now down to two. Yes, Martha Aquino and Stacy and Diwa have dropped Grace Kahura. Uh Quarters stationed throughout this 26.2 miles as we take a look at the elite fields. Francisco San Clemente on the left from Colombia, leading in our professional wheelchair division. We got Stacy and Diwa in the dark color from Kenya, along with Martha Aquino, her countrywoman in the women's race. They passed 10 miles in 55 minutes and 56 seconds. They're on 227 marathon pace. They're leading in the Morgan and Morgan marathon chase. Five men in the lead pack. The women are a minute and 25 seconds faster in, in mile 10 than they were last year. The men are two minutes and 30 seconds slower at seven miles than they were last year. So it's interesting. The women started off very slowly last year and came on like gangbusters. The men started out like gangbusters and faded late. There's many different roads to Rome, but right now the women are going steady state. They started out at right around 540 marathon pace, right at 227, and they've been right on it ever since. The men have started uh, much more gradually and the, the picking up is left to be had. There may be a question from the viewers at home that may be wondering, is there any way that the information is actually being conveyed to the men and the women where they lie in the Morgan, the Morgan Chase? Supposedly. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> there are big white, white. You know, we were talking about the wheelchair. We had some drama early on and now it's, it's pretty much been a one-man show. This is uh, Francisco San Clemente, 34 years old, and uh, he is uh, in charge. He looks like he's talking to our cameras. Right, and uh, they're, um, they're, they're, he's not getting feedback. I, I just think that, um, that they're making sure he's not, the cameramen aren't getting in his way, in his line of sight. And, you know, the wheelchair is so sophisticated with Josh Cassidy and, and James Sambetta falling earlier in this race and getting back on. And 
and continuing Jobs to like push. Um, there's so much more to think about than in uh, ro foot races, where all you're thinking about are the pair of shoes you're gonna wear that day. They have to be fitted in their chairs. You know that the chair technology, these Honda racing chairs that are so valuable right now, go for about $28,000. The gloves wow. that they wear could be upwards to $15,000. And if you think that we wear a pair of shoes and, and every few miles we have to change out our shoes that cost us a couple hundred. Okay. And we welcome you back to KTLA's live coverage of the Los Angeles Marathon presented by ASICS and for friends and family who have someone running in the race. Uh, Volvo is the sponsor of the Finish Line camera, which you can see at KTLA.com. And if you're running, and you like keeping track of your distance and time. Back out onto the course uh, as you take a look at the elite field, the men and the women, and uh, there is one man in the pro wheelchair division, but you can see that loop, Tony. Yeah, and as, as the talking heads once said, same as it ever was. I think that's the benefit of having that turnaround and doubling back on the course is you really, for the front runners, they could see yeah. how much of a lead they have, but for the masses, you really feel that energy on the opposite side of the street. So I think it really is a morale boost to come back on the course in that way. Now, for the first time, mile 11, the man ran it in four minutes and 54 seconds. The women ran it in five minutes and 47 seconds. That's the first mile. With the weather, but those two women are friends and they're coached by the same man, Heron Lagat, who is a good friend of ours over many years, who was a, a very good runner himself and a, a pacer in many races. Uh, and Heron coaches both the women. Well, and again, one is Stacy is a kind of a newbie in her second marathon, and Martha is a veteran. Well, we are at mile 25 where Francisco San Clemente is uh, closing in on victory in the 38th running of the Los Angeles Marathon. He is leading the pro wheelchair division and has been pretty much leading since that accident that we had earlier uh, in the day. In the first two miles are two leaders, Josh Cassidy from Canada and James Zambeda out of Philadelphia. Both took a, a left hand, a right hand turn and at the speed they were going hit some bump in the road and they both, they were not side by side, they were, James was slightly behind, but they both seemingly hit the same place and they both went down. The chairs just flipped and down they went. And next thing you know, Francisco San Clemente inherited the lead and he knew what to do with it once he got it. So he hadn't given it up. I mean, he's enjoying a little coasting right here. It's nice to have a little break with, with the hills he had prior on the course. And he's a Paralympian out of Colombia, 34 years of age. He just ran well at the Guadalajara Half Marathon down in Mexico, so he came in on form. And I was uh, talking to Krieger Schubert, a four-time champion, who was telling me that, yeah, watch out for this guy. This guy can really roll fast when he's on, and he's having a good day out there today. Although he did get fortunate in that uh, Cassidy went down with Sam Beta. Just an incredible story. You look at the power and the endurance and the fortitude necessary. You know, he did at one time serve a 13-month suspension for an unintentional doping violation after the 2019 Berlin Marathon. He had taken something, he had a contaminated weight loss supplement, and so that was kind of wiped off his record. But originally he had to suffer through that. Right, and you think that when you were spending the amount of hours they spend in their chairs that some of those um, those weight loss uh, supplements might be in their favor, that they retain water before they get on the start line and then they want to lose it at the, at the finish line, kind of um, have that play into their own hands instead of nature calling on its own accord. So I don't, I don't know, I have never had that conversation with any of my wheelchair athlete friends to, to see how that plays into their preparation. I always assume it's similar to the runners that you you consume and um, and go to the bathroom right before the race and everything's taken care of. Well, he said he watched the 2008 Paralympics on television and thought, I want to be an athlete again, and I was going to fulfill my dreams. And that's when he got back into sport after having uh, transverse myelitis in uh, inflammation of the spinal cord when he was 18 years old and lost the use of both of his legs after being a soccer player in high school as a goalkeeper. 
And this is where that incline is painfully placed toward the end stages yeah. of this race. That? that is if you needed more work. A unicyclist can't even keep up with, with Francisco this morning. There's mile 26 he's approaching, so 0.2 to go once he reaches that mark. The finish line is in sight for Francisco San Clemente. Yeah, look at that Columbia. broad back, though. He's a powerful man. So strong. Yeah, yeah these guys are beasts. And, uh, you notice he hasn't, and we see this occasionally, watch him do it, he hasn't looked back once. He hasn't looked back and he's adjusting his back brace because a lot of a lot of wheelchair racing is about your body position. Getting the most power out of every stroke is your is your back position and how your body sits in your chair. He's celebrating celebrating early now, able to, to stand up. There's sit a look up back in his side. Chair There's and a quick look back just to make sure under your you're looking you know, beneath your arm, just take a quick look back, make sure he's got this locked. And he's approaching the finish line right now. Francisco San Clemente, 34 years old, will be our first finisher of the day. Our first champion. And we'll try to get a time on Francisco. Congratulations. $10,000 prize purse was added this year for the pro wheelchairs. Camera on him the whole way. That's why we're able to catch that spill eight minutes into race morning. Yeah, he did a great job. Again, a veteran, a veteran in the sport. He's been a Paralympian. Uh, he's been a, a, a winner in marathons. He knows, he knows his business. And when he, he saw the opportunity, he grabbed it and then pushed ahead, opened up his lead, and never gave it up. It was never challenged. The inspiration that he provides for so many people as they watch him uh, achieve something that uh, at one point had to be unimaginable for him when he was diagnosed and was going through what he was going through, and, and now to, to, to accomplish something like this. We're going to continue our coverage of the 38th running of the Los Angeles Marathon, presented by ASICS. We're back in a moment. Hi, Darren. Such an unbelievable amount of energy here. Um, it's just a, a great time. These men have done something that's so hard to do. They did the marathon, of course, with the Pro Men's Wheelchair Division, and boy, did they scorch this course. We're going to start over here in third place with Jacob Allen. Jacob, congratulations to you. Gentlemen's got your award for you right here. J Jacob is from Tucson. Congratulations, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, next, in second place, we have Wyatt Willard from Northwood, Iowa. Congratulations to you, Wyatt. Pretty impressive, man. Thank you so much. Great to be here. All right. And then in first place in the Pro Men's Wheelchair Division is Francisco. I'm going to get it right. San Clemente. Yeah, my man. All right. He's from Colombia. And to uh, interpret for him, uh, if you could, please express to him congratulations and, and what makes what he does so important to the community. Ok, ya, eh, 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 diga eh, felicitaciones, o sea, felicidades y qué es lo que usted ha hecho por la comunidad y cómo entrenó para venir acá. Eh, bueno, eh, eh, bueno, thank you, thank you so much, eh, eh, happy, happy, eh, Colombia, muy feliz, muy feliz y trying, trying, difícil, difícil, muy difícil. Ya, yeah, dice que muchas gracias por todo, que es de Colombia, fue una carrera difícil, pero gracias a Dios, pues, Entrenó fuerte y muy buenos competidores y que tuvo bastante suerte hoy. Well, congratulations to all of you. We also want to make sure we recognize Dr. Richard Montmany from the CEO California Rehabilitation Institute. They're one of the, the sponsors of this particular division. Also, we want to thank Hawaiian Airlines. You see that, well, I've got the lay. These gentlemen are going to get lays with their medals as well. But it's certainly an honor. And congratulations to all three of them for scorching this course. We'll throw it back to you, Darren. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh... Miles 20 and 21, you can't, I, you lose track. You, you lose track if you lose track. 